Now the syllabus changes, and it doesn't change, it changes, they're always changing, but we're now currently in tax year 21-22. So if you're doing your CMAP, your equity release, your protection exams, you need to be thinking about the current tax year. Now the good news is that not a lot's changed. There's a slight change in tax bands and things like that. And the tax sheet that you get in the exam has it all for you. Make sure that you get hold of a copy of that tax sheet, of course, when or before you do the exam, not to memorize it, that's pretty stupid, isn't it? But to familiarize yourself with the contents of it. The exam itself, say CMAP, equity release, doesn't ask you to do complicated calculations. This is not a taxation examination. This is level three mortgage qualification. It asks you to understand it. You need to understand tax positions of people because you've got to recognize if somebody's a, a basic rate taxpayer or a higher rate taxpayer. You know, if they're a higher rate taxpayer, when you take down their salary income or their net profits, you immediately think, ah, oh, higher rate taxpayer. It starts to make you think of different product areas, different needs, different wants. Um, ISAs, for example, will rear their head. Personal pensions might rear their head as something to, to be advantageous to the customer. You know, a rent a room allowance, for example, on lodges, stuff like that all comes into it. Um, buy to let, of course, with a limited company versus a sole trader. Basically, it's somebody buying on their own versus an SPV. Go look at the, the tax angles on these things. And holiday lets is all about taxation and fiscal advantages. So you've got to understand people's tax position. You won't need to calculate it, though. There's accountants do that. Software does that anyway. But in the exam, they do appreciate you to have a, a sort of basic understanding. So I'm going to just run through some of the some of the calculations now using some slides. So those of you listening on podcast, um, I'll, I'll narrate it as we go along, so you'll see how it works. But you might want to uh, quickly Google and head over to YouTube, for example, where there'll be a copy of this video, which is from the 18th of October, 2021. And you can see the video there to accompany the podcast as well. So let me just head over to our PowerPoint. So I'm going to uh, change the view on our screen now so that you can see some PowerPoint slides. And uh, just coming up on your screen right now are some PowerPoint slides, Income Tax Calculation, CMAP and Equity Release 2021-22 is what we've got for you. So what I'm going to do now is uh, put myself in the picture. Why not? It'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? So uh, let me just um, appear on the uh, on the left-hand side for you so you can see me giving you the information. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is take a look at a non-taxpayer. A non-taxpayer is somebody who doesn't pay tax. So we need to prove that to you with some figures. So let's just change the viewpoint here. And as you can see, I've got um, a bucket or, or a tube or whatever you'll call it, non-taxpayer income tax 2021-2022. Now, this particular person, I've got Sandra. Sandra Jones earns £8,800. So uh, she's a reasonably good earner, probably part time at that rate, you know, basic minimum wage and those sort of things. So let's take a look at her situation, shall we? Now, she earns £8,800. She's entitled to a personal allowance. Everybody is, apart from one or two exceptions, which I'll take, take a look at for you in a second. So let's put the personal allowance in there, £12,570. As you can see, I've put it in the bucket there. And as you can probably see quite clearly, that amount is all tax free. So Sandra doesn't have to pay any income tax on any income of, of below 12,570. And her salary, therefore, is equally um, taken in by that personal allowance. So she pays no income tax. Good old Sandra. And shouldn't really, should she? Because she earn an awful lot, so every penny counts, as they say. But let's move on to the next example, which is a basic rate taxpayer. And I've got a basic rate taxpayer for the same tax year for you. Here I've got June. June earns £20,000, so that's a good salary for June. And um, let's see how much tax she pays. Now, let's put her salary into the bucket, £20,000, as you can see there. And uh, what I'm also going to do is give her a personal allowance, because she's entitled to one. Again, £12,570. As you can see from the visual, that gives her quite a lot of tax-free income. But there is now a bit of income in which is going to be taxable. So you need to calculate the difference. So I worked it out that uh, it exceeds it by £7,430, as you can see from the visual there. Now, that's all at basic rate. Basic rate is 20%. Check that in the tax sheet. So work that out is £1,486 is the amount of income tax she pays. She'll pay it under PAYE. She'll pay it um, every month. 
and that comes straight off of her salary. So she'll obviously get a, a net figure of, of a little bit less than 20,000 divided by 12. So that's broadly how basic rate taxpayers work. But you need to take a look now at what happens to one or two other examples. The one that is particularly advantageous is the marriage allowance. Not the married couples allowance, but the marriage allowance. This is one in which clients are entitled to. Now, I've got an example here of uh, Brian, who earns £35,000. He happens to be a basic rate taxpayer, and you'll see that in a second why. Now, um, just put his salary into the bucket for you so you can see how much he earns. Marie, his partner, doesn't earn anything. She's, she's a civil partner or married. She doesn't earn anything for whatever reason. I'm not going to judge that, but she's a non-taxpayer, as you can appreciate. She's therefore not using her allowance, and that's the exciting part. Now, Brian's got a personal allowance like everybody else, so he's got the normal amount of personal allowance, as you can see there, 12570 But um, Marie doesn't use hers, so she's allowed to transfer a little bit across. She can transfer 1260 which you did your maths, 10%, over to Brian. So basically, it increases Brian's personal allowance up to 13830 Well done him. <laughs> He's got a bigger personal allowance, bigger tax-free cash, which is great. So again, we can now do the calculation, can't we? We've now got um, a, a difference between his salary and his new personal allowance. That exceeds it by 21170 Multiply that by 20%, because that's the, the rule. That gives me a tax of £4,234, which he'll pay under PAYE. And that's great news all around, isn't it? Because he doesn't have to pay as much tax. So as a couple, they're kind of making a bit more money. And they should, because they may have children. We, we don't know the situation. So that's the marriage allowance. It allows um, young Brian to increase his personal allowance. Nice one, eh? Let's get into some high-rate taxpayer dudes, shall we? Let's get into a high-rate taxpayer. And I'm going to give you an example now of Anita. Anita rocks up. She earns £60,000. Now, you'll notice, of course, that looking at that salary, you know pretty much immediately she's going to be a high-rate taxpayer. But let's prove it, shall we? So Anita, of course, has her salary. So let's put that in there for you as well. And by the way, this could be net profits from self-employment. It doesn't matter. It's all income sources are added to this bucket. I'm not looking at dividends or anything complicated like that. But this is all like earned income. So she's entitled to a personal allowance, like everybody else. So that gives a tax-free income of 12570 What we now need to do, though, is put in the basic rate bit. Now, she, she, she's entitled to pay some basic rate tax quite a bit, but only up to a certain cap, in which you can look up in the tax sheet. Now, I put it in the figures here. So add the tax-free allowance, which she's entitled to the basic rate cap, gives me a total amount of basic rate tax of 37700 That's the most income that she will pay at basic rate. Above that, it becomes high rate. So do the calculations, 20%, as you can see there, give that um, £7,540, which you know is quite a bit of money there, isn't it? Which is nice to see. So looking at um, the situation as we continue upwards and onwards, we've got a little bit more money coming through because she's got to be paying some high rate tax. High rate, of course. Now, if we work out the numbers for the high rate, we work out the difference in her salary and the high rate band there. It gives me 9,730. At 40%, that gives me 3,892. And that's the most high rate tax that she needs to pay. So add that all together, that gives us a total tax bill of £11,432. So very nice too, eh? That's the amount of money she has to pay. OK, that's a straightforward higher rate tax band calculation, which, you know, it's quite a bit of money, really, at the end of the day, and we mustn't argue with that. But what I want to do now, then, is take a look at the additional rate taxpayer, because this has a couple of issues going on. People start to lose their personal allowance and pay some extra tax as well. So what I'm going to do now is press a button for you so you can see the next figures. We've got here um, Umran. Now, Umran earns £175,000. There you go, which is uh, a nice amount of money there, isn't it? Now, what we've got to do now for Umran is we've got to take a look at exactly what the figures are. So. Let's have a look at his salary. We'll pop it in there for you, 175000 Nice. Now, he has a personal allowance, or he had, I should say, a personal allowance. So let's put that in the calculation. Now, the problem here is that he earns more than he should 
to enable him to get the personal allowance. So I've got to take that out. He basically loses it because he earns over a hundred thousand pounds. So that's just the way it goes. It's just the, the rule, you know. So he doesn't have a personal allowance. Therefore, he has to start paying tax on all of his money. So, as before, we have the first 77,700 at 20%, gives me 7,540. Everybody pays basic rate tax. Now, he's also got some high rate tax. Now, this is capped as well at 150. That's the most income that somebody will pay high rate tax on. So, again, put the figures in there for you. Let's move out of the way so you can see that clearly. You've got um, the numbers coming in there, 112,300 at 40% gives me 44,920. And we're starting to add these up now. Go to the higher rate figure. Above the higher rate, we get additional rate. And as you can see there, we've got additional rate tax to pay. Let's put the numbers in there. 25,000 pound is the amount of income at additional rate, which is at 45%, a little bit more for you. That gives you 11,250. And you can add all those figures up to give you a total tax bill for Umran of 63,710 pounds. Quite a bit of money. But, you know, the guy can afford it, so why not? Indeed. And there end of our income tax calculations for you. I hope that's been quite useful, really, because you're a bit of an update, isn't it, at the end of the day? That's all that's been designed to do. OK, well done, everybody. Let's move on then and take a look at some other topics, shall we? So that's a little bit of an update for you on taxation. Just gives you some ideas about how numbers are working, how figures are working. But um, you might want to do a few more calculations if you want to get yourself comfortable with that. But in the exam, you won't get too many questions based upon that. Uh, it's not a tax calculation exam. This, this exam is an understanding and appreciation of 